here at uh, 534 this evening. And uh, before we go any further, uh, for those of you who don't know, and maybe are just for the first time seeing this group, it ha we have an, an additional member who has just come on, Darius Cage, and we want to officially welcome him to the group. Uh, thank him in advance for his service to the town in this, in this regard. And um, Darius, if you wouldn't mind uh, saying hello to folks and um, tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll move forward. Hello everyone, I'm Darius Cage. Um, I'm in ninth grade at Amherst Regional High School. Uh, I'm very excited to work with you guys and I'm very excited for what the future holds. Thank you, we're, we're very, very happy to have you uh, join us. And uh, you know we're looking forward to to your um, your comments and your contributions, um, especially as a, a young man in our town who um, is active. We know uh, in school and in other parts of the community. So welcome again, thank you. And I want to thank the uh, you know Mr. Bachelman and uh, Ms. Moyston for. Uh, helping us move forward with that uh, interview and that and that appointment. So so thank you very much. Um, so at at this point, what I'd like to do is review the agenda uh, for all of us. Um, Ms. Moyson, I don't know if you have that available to put on the screen, but if you do, that would be great. Thank you. And. So here we are um, and we're at the opening remarks and we're going to uh, uh, do the approval of the minutes in a moment, but just so that uh, people in the, in the community particularly know we follow this format where we will open up with uh, after the, uh, the agenda review and approval of the minutes, we're gonna open up to the community for public comment which we usually reserve about 15 minutes for that. And um, reminding people that uh, this is a time for uh, making comments to us as a group. And uh, you know, our role is to listen as always. And we don't engage in conversation at that point, but we welcome your comments and thoughts at that time. And follow that. following that, I will open the floor up to our, uh, our working group members to give us a little update on anything that uh, they've been doing relative to this work in their professional and personal lives that might inform the work of the group. And then after that, we get into the meat of what we're doing this evening. And our agenda uh, includes uh, setting our calendar for the completion of outreach tasks and reports. Um, I will go over it again for, for the public in particular our charge so that we're reminded of what we're, what we're doing in this work, especially for those of you who are new to the, the meeting. And uh, so we'll be discussing those tasks and reports and trying to set forth a, a calendar for when we might uh, consider getting those things done in a timely manner. We um, are also going to engage in a discussion about hearings and other outreach strategies. You know, part of our our goal here is to make solid connections and meaningful connections with our community and organizations and agencies. And uh, in order to do that, we need to establish some framework for how we're going to do that. So we'll be discussing that at that point. And then uh, we're gonna talk a bit about best practices um, about around collecting racial uh, data, especially with regard to the Amherst Police Department. Uh, this is a, a piece with the, the, the group feels is important. Um, it's, a, it's a matter of importance to many other states and, and districts around the United States. And it's important for us to explore that. So we'll be taking a look at that and having a discussion about that. Uh, finally, uh, we do have some needs as a group. Um, and uh, we've talked a bit about those in previous meetings, but at that at that point in the agenda, we'd like to think about what we actually need before we start making 
requests for assistance, either uh, from the town or, or other places within our community. Um, if, follow that, there's if any uh, upcoming events, uh, we'll establish a next meeting date at that time and make that public. And then we'll entertain any um, uh, items that have not come before the chair within the 48 hours prior to the meeting, and then we'll move to adjourn. So that said, uh, let me go back and um, go to minutes. Thank you, Jennifer. So um, are there, you know, for the group, are there any um, uh, comments, corrections, uh, edits around uh, the minutes of our last meeting on the, on the 17th? Paul? Yes. Uh, I think the minutes are excellent. There was one minor correction. When we get to the business of giving the three extra days to committee members to submit things, that was specifically about the questions for the Amherst Police Department. Correct. And where the minutes have been talking earlier about questions we were going to ask the community, uh, I thought it'd be helpful if that specified. Um, where it says, just above that, you have a motion to open the question. I would rather than questionnaire, I would say questions for the APD. I think that'll take care of it. Okay. okay. And then I also have one correction too. Ms. Herrera, yeah. Yeah, thanks again for the notes. They were very comprehensive. I like mm -hmm. the fact that there was a lot of information. Uh, the only thing in my area where it said um, the last bullet under my section E uh, 2E, it said once budget was cut by 10%, 11 police officers left, six went to other towns and five just resigned. It, it's just a correction that it was um, 11 submitted applications to go elsewhere and five left. Oh, so That's what I had more. read in the article. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other comments? Ms. Walker, anything? And, and I'm all set. I, one of the ones you, you brought up, Russ, I was gonna mention, but we're all, it seems like we're all set. Um, I'd like to accept a motion to approve those minutes um, with, the, with the stated corrections. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes with those stated corrections? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with the stated corrections. Okay, Ms. Ferreira has made a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended. Um, all those in, yes? All those in favor, um, Russ Vernon Jones? Aye. Alicia Walker? Aye. Deborah Ferreira? Aye. Brianna Owen. Hi. Thank you. And I'm an I. So the minutes have been approved. Get everybody there. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to open now. Um, uh, the floor to our, our community for, for public comment. If you would, um, uh, if you have something to say, Ms. Moisson will, will recognize you and um, we'll open you up for commentary. So we have, it just says Jeffrey would like to, um, has his hand up. Okay. Jeffrey, welcome.
Nope. Yep. He was there. No, I don't think that that he we won't promote him back in as um. It, okay. Yeah. You're muted, Paul. I think we anticipate that was someone trying to bomb. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Very quick, Jen. <laughs> yeah, that was tried. I, I was well, saying, I didn't. Wow, that was, the the that picture was didn't look rapidly. right. So uh, let's hope that's all, and then that's okay. over. Okay, we're still in public uh, comment. Any other uh, comments from the community? Okay, not not seeing any. Uh, thank you all for your participation. I want to uh, uh, welcome uh, Ms. Owen officially this evening and Ms. Anoni Baku uh, this evening. And just so you know, uh, Darius Cage has now joined us and he introduced himself earlier. So we have a full complement of folks here tonight and it's a great group. Also, I want, to hey, thank, I want to thank everyone for their their work and input in between these meetings, and certainly want to thank um, Mr. Bockelman and Ms. Moiston for their support uh, throughout that process. So let's move right into the agenda, and I want to uh, just go over very quickly. And I don't know if you have it readily available, uh, Ms. Moiston, but I wanted to review the the purpose and the uh, the charge of this group. Again, I think it's important to state that on occasion so that people who are new to listening to us uh, um, and certainly it's a good reminder for us to remember where our charge lies and how it informs the group. So if you have that, great. If not, I can just briefly review it. Sorry, I'm gonna see if I can pull it up. I had so many screens up that I couldn't get back to the actual meeting to mm -hmm. comment back on that. I was if unmute. you have it, it'd be great for people to see it visually, <laughs> visually. Um, and uh, just one moment. Mm -hmm. Let's see. There you go. Can you see that? Yeah, thank you very much. You and um, so this is just important, I, I think, especially for the public to, to, to see and to, to understand, you know, the, the purpose of the Community Safety Working Group is to make recommendations on alternative ways of providing public safety services to the community and um, make recommendations to reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures of the Amherst Police Department. So, you know, within this charge, you see a, a number of, uh, of things we're aiming to do within this work. And in particular, the, the working group, where it says the working group can achieve this by. And I think if you just breeze down looking at the bullets, you can see that the, the intent of the group is to uh, to learn a lot more about our town and our police department and certainly how our organizations and agencies work um, 
with the police department. We're also um, examining a lot of existing structures. We're doing research, we're reviewing policies, et cetera, and we're exploring models. So that's the work that's going on between meetings. And you're gonna hear more about that as we're gonna be talking about how to interface more with the community. But I just wanted to mention that this work is, is very intense. It's, we're on a very tight timeline to get this done. We realize the importance of the work and uh, everyone on the working group has been working intently to, to fulfill this charge. We are now in our fourth public meeting, I believe, and you know we're trying to move, move forward aggressively with reaching out to the community and um, making that connection. So, um, this is just important to, to see. And as you probably saw the way Kemp on the screen, it is, re is connected to the, um, uh, to the, our town website under the community safety working group. And you can go in there and see, reminding people, you can see our minutes, you can see um, our, our meeting, our recorded meetings. Uh, and this is a place also you can interact with the with the committee with the working group so feel free and i encourage you to do do so to connect with that uh, that website uh, so that said i'd like to thank you um miss moisten i'd like to uh, go to our uh action and discussion items and uh the, the first one is setting our calendar for completion of outreach tasks and reports um there's a lot before us um, and this is probably going to connect to some other activities within this agenda. But uh, one of the things that we have on our plate right now is a, a deadline for January 15th for a report. And um, there seemed to be some sentiment uh, expressed at the last meeting that this might be a tight, tight timeline, certainly given what is um, you know, what we're confronted with now uh, with holidays back to back and um, certainly, you know, wanting to communicate fully and, and comprehensively with people may take a little more time. So uh, I'd like to hear from the, the working group regarding that. And I know Mr. Bachelman, uh, the target date has some meaning for the town, but I think it would be important to hear what the, the, the group has to say with respect to getting that um, moving forward and you know when we can legitimately and reasonably put it together uh, in the form that's useful to you in the town. So I'd like to just open the floor up to the, our group. Yes, Ms. Owen. I think we need more time. Um, I think we're moving in the right direction by connecting with the community first, but I also think um, January 15th is maybe a realistic timeline to hear from the community rather than have the report for um, the police, I guess. Um, because also to hear all the voices in the community, they're also celebrating the holidays and off from work and enjoying. So I think we need more time, but that's just my opinion. Thank you, other, other comments? Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I also agree with Ms. Owen um, that we need more time. You know, I actually want to know, you know, one, whether we have that link um, for the community uh, in terms of the questions that we had um, put together. And then also whether the questions for the police went out um, with that 10 business day and the deadline for that, because also that will inform us, because I think we need a little bit more information back before we can be doing a report out to, mm -hmm. to the council. Um, and also I do want to hear from Mr. Bachelman in terms of, okay, what was the kind of um, reason as to why the 15th was important to the town council, right? Uh, for them to get a report, I want to get more of that idea so that then we can have more of a better idea how to, you know, what, what that, that extension, what would be the date that we need to, to ask for. So anyway, that, those are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll just put that on the on the board for a second, Ms. Ferreira. I'll come back to those questions and see if we can get answers to them. I just want to see if there are other folks who want to chime in and add to that or want to um, support any of those comments previously made. Ms. Pat? 
So I agree with what both uh, Ms. Owen and Ms. Ferrara just said, but in addition, I guess my biggest concern is that we only meet once a week for a couple hours, and I feel that we need more resources to help us uh, accomplish our task. Mm -hmm. So even if we're given extension, without additional resources, I don't think we'll be able to pull it off in several months. Thank you. And if I may, just in response to that, um, in, in our agenda on the uh, that item D is uh, resources and assessment of need. If, if we see that agenda item, that would be a place where we can come back to that, Ms. Pat. Yeah. Because um, I think, you know, we all agree and the, the town is certainly willing to be supportive, um, but I think we have to have a conversation about what it is we actually need um, so that we can be clear and accurate about what kind of support it is to get our work done. Um, let me go back to um, Ms. Ferreira's questions. You asked about the, uh, basically about the, what's on the website, right? The, the, the portal. And I don't know if there's any update on that, Ms. Moyston, you can uh, share with us. And then, you know, Mr. Bachelman also, the, the question about the January 15th date and the significance of that for the town. So either one of you maybe comment on those two things. And if you wouldn't mind restating the question again, Ms. Ferreira about the well, yeah, my, my, my two questions was just follow up from last week, right? Because we had to come up with that kind of uh, list of questions for the community. So I just wanted to know whether that's, um, if, whether the link is, is somewhere, because obviously then I'd also like to share it with some contacts and, you know, do my outreach through my social media. So that's one. Two, whether the questions went out to the police, um, because I know we're supposed to be doing that simultaneous. And if so, what's that? 10 day, 10 business day period that we gave to them so that we can, you know, have that in the back of our minds as we think about an extension. And then three, uh, what is the significance of the January 15th to the town council? Okay, got it. So um, either, either Mr. Bachelman, Ms. Moisten, either one of you want to uh, begin the response, Mr. Bachelman. So the letter to the police went out um, Monday, I think it was. Um, there was some editing of it back and forth, but we got, I think we got the final version out there. Um, they're, they're facing the same challenge as we all are in the holiday season with the key people mostly being on vacation. But if they, if they have 10 days, um, so that would be the first week of January, January 4th. Um, so I, I have not talked with the chief in particular about whether that's, he's going to be able to meet that deadline, but they've got all of next week to work on it. Um, so what I ad advise him is to answer the things that are easily answerable. Um, if it's existing data, note that. And then if there's more, if, if he has to spend more time on certain pieces of it, identify those things, but let's get an answer to the, to the working group, uh, in the first week of January. Um, so, um, and why, and the other question was why that date, why January 15th? The reason for the January 15th is the town council vote was to have a report back by the end of January. They wanted to uh, establish that um, the work of the working group would be incorporated into the budget making process for the FY22 budget. Um, now, I, you know, I'm, I'm privy to all your meetings or, um, and so I know that where you're headed. So that's, you know, I think I'm, I'll be responsible for reporting to the town council at their meeting on January 25th. Um, and at that moment, I'll, you know, just give, I'll give them a status report as to how far you've gone. You've done a tremendous amount of, I mean, you're start, you were starting at zero and you're really ramped up week, meeting weekly, very aggressively. So I appreciate that work. Um, clearly you're going to need more time. I think everybody recognizes that you can't do the level of work and, um, cover the, um, work that you need to do. I think the, the work was designed to talk just about policing first because that's the thing that's probably gonna impact the budget the most. And then all the other things at the, in the second half of your charge. So, I, so the, the, the answer to the question, um, I would say if, if you say, here's where we are as of January 15th, you know, in, in January say, here's where we are, we think we're gonna need 
maybe by January 15th, you'll have a sense of how much more time you'll need for that piece of it. Maybe you need another four weeks or six weeks or something like that. Um, we can work with that. So just one, yes, Ms. one quick follow-up question with that. So, so it makes you know it clearer in my mind in terms of why it was that they were asking for it because of the kind of having some of that information for the FY22 budget. So does that mean though, that if we take an extension, then um, it won't, that won't, uh, we won't have, if our recommendation kind of make, you know, has something to do with the budget for the police and things like that, will that be taken into consideration or what have we missed our mark because we didn't get in the information by the 15th? You will not have missed the mark. You know, the budget is a, we, we've begun our budget process. We've met with the, the department heads, but this one I know is in work, is a work in progress. Um, so yeah, the, the goal of the council was to not lose a whole fiscal year budget process. And that's, and you know, if you are in danger of that, I would definitely let you know in advance, well in advance that here's a deadline. I don't have a firm deadline. The sooner you can do it, the better, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think you've, you've got time. I don't, I deliver a budget to the council on May 1st. Mm -hmm. um, but decisions are made probably two months prior to that. So, but, so there is a deadline. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. At the time we make our first report, mm -hmm. if we're advocating for some functions currently with the police department to be taken away from the police department and provided by another town agency or by contract, um, do we need to have a detailed proposal and uh, a budget to go with that by our first report? Uh, or can we, or, you know, as a more conceptual report of L from us uh, sufficient at that point? Yes, Mr. Bachman. Uh, so I think the idea is that we think you should be doing this and you could throw that onto the staff to come back with a plan and say, here's, how would you do that if you said, we want more services provided by social service agencies or, or a different division of the town or something like that. You could say that we think this should happen. Um, the more um, thought you put into it, clearly you'll be studying other cities and towns and how they've done it, the better off we'll be, but we can, we'll, we'll apply it to how it fits with Amherst in particular. Mm -hmm. So just in following up on, on the comments by Ms. Ferreira and Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, even as early as January 15th, you know, we, we could have some kind of summary statement as to where our status is at that point. And at that time, you would also recommend, we could also recommend some kind of uh, narrative statement around the budget in terms of what we think we'd like to see uh, not being fully committed, you know, at that point, because we probably won't know, we haven't had a lot of time to spend with not only the police department, but with the organizations, you know, agencies and nonprofits, et cetera. I don't want to lose sight of them as well. But, um, you know, so it's more of a summary report, I, I guess I'm hearing. And also I'm wondering if there are some elements of that that uh, you could share with us to say, here's kind of, here's what you, Here's what I would be useful to me at, at that particular time. So it gives us some framework. We, we can come up with something, I'm sure, but I just don't want to be guessing as to what might be useful at that point in time before the your January 25th meeting. Uh, so Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I would suggest that in terms of a January item since the town manager has been in our meetings that he could simply report to the town council, you know, what, what he's experienced and what we've done just from his own experience. And as I recall, I mean, Mr. Bachman just said maybe another six weeks. Mm -hmm. Should we now set a tentative date of the end of February as our report on section one of our work? And would that be appropriate in the view of the town manager. Is that directed to Mr. Bachelman? Uh If I may, yes. Yeah, okay, I was just wondering, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. Bachelman. So yeah, I, th I think it would be useful if, if you are gonna continue on this weekly schedule, I'm not sure if you're willing to continue that. 
but if you, you might have two meetings in January, say at, on the January 13th meeting, you might say, where are, let's do it, reconnoiter where you are. I would then feed back to you how, what I will report to the council at their, on their 25th meeting. I think it's, um, you know, if, if you say we're, we're headed in this direction or that direction, any kind of direction you can give me, that would be helpful to know where, where you're going as a, as a working group. You may not be there quite then by then. Um, but I think the end of February, we can, we can work with that. And that. That's helpful to me. I think Ms. Ms. Pat, you had your hand up. Yeah, I think what would be helpful for me is um, the assurance that we will get some resources to help us. I'm okay with the six weeks extension, as long as I know that we might be getting some help with, with, with the work we're doing. Otherwise six weeks will not be sufficient. To have our report ready. Yeah, I think I think what in you know, please correct me, uh, you know, Mr. Bachman, if this is going down the wrong track, but I, I believe the town is willing to provide um, support to us for what we need to do, and I think we can uh, best serve our needs by articulating them as clearly as possible. So I, I'm su supporting what you're saying, you know, Ms. Pat. In that you know we we may certainly need some additional legs under this to to help us get this done. I, I think it's our responsibility uh, to be clear about what it is actually we're going to need, so that um, you know the town can respond in kind. So hopefully we can when we get to that we can have a fuller conversation about that specifically. You know what are we going to need to, to get this work done, and then we can dig down a little bit deeper if that's okay. Ms. Ferreira. But I guess I guess that's where I'm kind of, you know, in agreement with um, Ms. Pat, with Ms. Pat, because I'm kind of like, it's almost kind of like, how can we come up with a date certain in terms of kind of like, okay, this is how much of an extension we need if we don't really know kind of like, you know, like, like you said, Paul uh, Wiley, Mr. Wiley, that we need to kind of figure out what our need is. We definitely need more help because as Ms. Pat said, it's, meeting on a weekly basis without any other work kind of happening that moves us along um, is it, gonna be difficult for us, right? Even though we're all doing, I know in between meetings, we're all doing research and reading up, we're doing all of those things, but that's still not gonna be enough in terms of putting together a report. So, so that's where I'm kind of a, in a little bit of a quandary yet because we haven't talked about what, what our needs are and what the resources are. So I'm a little bit wary about committing to a six week extension without kind of having that 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 conversation first. Sure. Yeah. And and I don't I don't think at least I, I didn't I didn't hear necessarily a commitment to that just yet. Yeah. But but, but even but I see what you're yet. saying. Yeah. yeah. And I and I think it makes sense. So maybe this is in some ways putting the, the cart before the horse a bit. But at you know at the same time I think it's important for us to have in this background what we're thinking about. We are talking about an extension for sure. We, we are certainly are gonna be talking about what is gonna be done within that extended period. And, you know, we need to, you know, move rapidly toward what, what it is we need to, to have in place in order to support that work so that we get it done in a timely manner. We're gonna move, move to that, you know, pretty quickly. And I think we should be able to resolve that. And then we can come back, circle back to the, um, you know, the timeline again to see if it makes sense because we don't, you know, depending on what resources we're asking for, we want to know when they're going to be in place to do the work. So that'll have something to do with, with how we, we perform going forward. So, okay, let me put that on hold for just a, a moment. We'll, we'll come back to this again, um, everyone, as we talk about the resources. I wanted to, to go back to Ms. Moyston to, um, to comment on the other question Ms. Ferreira raised about the link, correct? About the link, yes. Yeah, so I'm just working with IT to get that link out and as soon as it's ready on the web, which should be, if not tomorrow, early next week, I'll send it to you all so that you have it individually in an email as well. Um, and then it'll be on the web page as well. Okay. And if you can think of any other places for it to be sent, you can send me that and I can send the link there too. Like I could send it to the Amherst Survival. Well, I don't know how they would distribute it or how. Right because they're outdoors. But if you have ideas of other places where it could be 
place, then let me know. Well, I, I think I would I would um, in, encourage members of the group to 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 all respond to Ms. Moisten around that charge, especially. Um, I know we've had some conversations, you know, Ms. Owen and, and Ms. Walker about the, the community. Um, and I know the Amherst Police Department is, is a focal point right now for us, but uh, there's a large extended community of, you know, the nonprofits, for example, we were talking about. So, you know, your feedback and, and you know, Ms. Pat, um, Ms. Walker, you know, it's gonna be very important around that as well. I think that, that that link has to be, uh, you know, a, a solid place where people can go and feel that they have a connection to this group. So, any any input you can think about and give to, you know, forward to Ms. Moisson would be helpful. Mr. Vernon Jones, I think once the link is ready, it would make sense also to have a press release uh, in which we let people know and see if the newspaper will print it. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think we should be negotiating the wording of press releases in committee meetings. And I'm wondering whether we can authorize our chair uh, in consultation with whatever support the town can offer um, to put out press releases about such things. Ms. Owen. I also wanted to throw out there, I think it would be a good idea. Obviously, I think social media is a really great way to spread the link, but maybe we could make a flyer. Um, at my job, I do like these branded flyers through an app called Canva. So I'd be more than happy to put something together if we wanna do something like that once the link is available and just post, put it everywhere, like laundry mats, restaurants that are doing takeout, um, community places that are open, I guess. It's a little more difficult because of COVID, but I think that would still be important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm so I just want to ask because I've been through this with other committees right. before as well that when we go to distributing that I will have a, a few of you will volunteer to help distribute it in local places like laundry mats and different restaurants, correct? So we'll make we'll make sure that happens, Ms. Moist, <laughs> for sure. Um, so in terms of press releases, um, I'm just you know working with Mr. Vernon Jones off of your comment. I can certainly put together. I, I'd be happy to to work with someone um, on you know co-authoring a, a press release and you know run it by um, you know Mr. Bachelman, Ms. Moisten, and uh, see if we can get it moving. If um, someone would like to join in with me. Ms. Pat? I think um, it's fine for the chair and co-chair, if you don't mind, uh, Ms. Owen. Yeah, I can. Yeah. If that's all right with both of you, I'm okay with that. So you're, you're volunteering Ms. Owen, huh? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're going to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're good on that. So, so Ms. Owen, you and I will, will communicate on that and we'll get something. Um, so, Ms. Moyston, you're talking about the, the timing of this. It should be ready, up and ready by when? I'm hoping by early, early next week. I don't know. I have to, you know, it is, again, we have some holidays and sure. some folks are yeah. in and out. So I just, I have to connect with, reconnect. So I want to just be, you know, that's why I'm asking just so we can get the timing of a, a release out. But I will have more tomorrow. And then I also, and this, but we have like a weekly check-in with press through the town. And I don't know if that's at some point that you guys would want to send your press release to um, the town manager or our communications manager. And then that can be announced there as well. Sure, when, it, when is that? Is that a, a, well, I, that's a regular a weekly uh, time and moment, Mr. Bachman? Yeah, so uh, we, uh, if once you develop what you have, uh, we meet with the press on Tuesdays. Um, we can put it through the town social networks, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and on the town's website, and however other ways people can fit, it, you know. And then if, if people can pick it up through their social networks, that's the way to really. It, people are going to connect because you post it, not because the town posts it, probably. But we can sort of get the format out and make it easy for you to do that. 
Sounds good. Okay, so um, Ms. Owen, you and I will will work on that and get it to the town in a timely manner. Ms. Pat. So I have a, a lingering concern. Maybe I'm jumping the uh, I'm jumping the uh, gun right now. I'm thinking, um, and I don't have problem with the distribution mode that we've just discussed. I'm thinking, have we thought about some folks, some resident who would like to respond to the question here, but wouldn't want to submit it publicly due to fear of retaliation because that's real in this town. So how, you know, so that's why I kept going. Yeah, I kept mentioning we need resources. We need resources. Ms. Moisten, yes. Thank you, Ms. Penn. Yeah. I'm going back to the um, the ambassadors or community mm -hmm. leaders. Mm -hmm. And I, um, the Human Rights Commission already has an active list of people who've already said that they would like to be involved in some way as an ambassador. So I, at our next meeting, I can bring that list to you um, or I could just email it to you. I'm on, just to say, I'm. Um, sometime next week either or so whichever works best for you guys but the, and then if you guys have folks because the more people that we have in the community th helping with this the 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 more pe responses we'll get mm -hmm. Ms. Pat? i think that's great when you first mentioned it uh was it the previous meeting i like the whole concept of ambassadors and community leaders and you just answered my question like could we submit suggested names to you and I just have to be um, cautious that we should think about stepping for these people to do the work for us. Think about what, I'm sorry? Stepping. Yes. Okay. Ms. Moisten. So just because I've been working on this for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I would like to have a little mini ambassador program where they have a, just like a little bit of a training of local government 101 and yes, to be stipend in some way, um, whether that be per, I don't want to call it a job, but per like if the, this time it's to do this questionnaire and then the next time it's something else, it, you know, each time or if it's just a general stipend, I don't know, but um, I'm hoping to carry out like a whole full program for them. Okay. And also this, you know, when I, I think you're, you're raising a, a, a point, uh, Ms. Pat, I think that, you know, we all wonder about certainly when people um, sort of, they, they begin interacting with this particular tool and they're, they're making comments and putting input in. Um, we, we, we sometimes are concerned about whether or not we want signatures or whether we want, you know, we will accept anonymity, uh, those kinds of things. And so um, I don't know if that's something that the, the group is thinking about too. Um, you know, there are some pluses and minuses on both sides. Uh, maybe some folks want to say certain things um, in some feedback and would rather remain anonymous. There are others who uh, be happy to, to undersign anything that, that, that they write. But um, I'd like to hear if there are any, any questions or concerns from the group about this as we go on forward. Ms. Walker? Um, so I wonder when we're collecting the answers to the questions, does that become public data? Like can other people besides us see the answers to everybody else's questions? Uh, May I recognize you, Mr. Bachman? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so anything that comes into the town is a public record. So anybody, if they ask for it, we must produce it as a, as a document unless it's, you know, HIPAA protected or uh, involved in, unless it's privileged in some way. Uh, but anybody can come in and ask for anything um, under the public records law. So that's why you might want to have something to do with some way to anonymize the, the responses. Ms. Pat? I mean, the idea of people not identifying themselves and submitting their responses, I think it's a good idea, but 
I don't know about you guys, um, nothing is private anymore. I mean, your email can tra trace who submitted responses. So I'm not trying to be difficult tonight, but it, it is harsh reality for some people. Um, if it's coming through, you know, if they have to submit their responses to the town, whether they identify themselves or not, email can trace you. But I am um, believe that we're also thinking about other options of how people can, you know, submit their responses, like the ambassador program. So I feel a little bit relieved about that. Mm -hmm. Ms. Morrison? Um, so with the forms, the way that it comes in, so when we receive like the people who submitted applications to be on this committee, the only way that we know what your email is, is from you submitting it. So that part we can't see, perhaps IT can get in there and, and dig deeper, but we can't see that as the viewer looking at it. Um, and the other thing that I want to suggest is I, just from past experience of trying to um, engage the community, the, the backbone of this work is going to come from you guys speaking to residents and saying, hey, we have this, because the only people who typically would know that this is on our website are the people who already linked and tapped into Amherst resources. Um, so it's very, so, but it doesn't matter if it's submitted by paper, right? It's still submitted to the same public records. So I don't know if you can take that information yourself. And I don't know that necessarily that you need people's names either. Ms. Owen, and then Ms. Ferrer. How do people feel about having um, the form or the survey, the name part be optional? Would that be a possibility? Because I think retaliation, I, I think that's a really good point. I mean, what? Oh, sorry. Well, let me. Ms. Freer was next, and then sorry. then Ms. Mr. Bachelman, and then Ms. Ms. Pat. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, you know, I agree with Ms. Owen that I think the important thing is for us to get the information, and you know, the whole um, fear of retaliation is very real. Um, I know we're all going to be outreaching to you know folks in the town and young people in the town for them to respond and things like that and a lot of them are going to be afraid possibly of getting impacted in one way or another right if their names out there and things like that so i think we we need to facilitate it to um allow folks to be able to either put their name or not put their name you know if, if they don't want um the only thing that i know that a lot of times especially in the work that i you know that i do and i've done in the past is that if there's an anonymous um, claim that comes in, and obviously if it has anything that, you know, could end up being something that needs to be investigated or something like that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, then that's that's something that we have to be aware of. We would have to turn it over because everything is public record anyway. We'd have to turn it over um, for, for some follow-up. Let's say if someone's putting something there that, you know, maybe they're being a risk to themselves or maybe a risk to others or something like that, you know? Um, that's the only kind of, thing that I know in the past that's been a little bit weird in terms of having anonymous um, information, but just wanted to kind of share that. Mm -hmm. And I think I lost a cue there. I don't know. I think it was Mr. Was it back, Bachman. Was it back to you, Ms. Pat, or was it Mr. Bachman? I can't. Mr. Bachman. Mr. Bachman, then Ms. Pat. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, to Ms. Owen, yes, you can not require a, an email address if you don't want to. Um, you can say optional uh, on anything you want. So you can craft it however you want. Mm -hmm. Other comments? So I, you know, I, I think I, I heard the point, I believe it was from Ms. You Pereira. skipped me. <laughs> I, I said other people that I didn't, I thought you said, I thought you shook your head, Ms. 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 Pat, I thought you said no. No, Mr. Buckman was ahead of me. I it's know, but I said, okay. <laughs> So do we have this in Spanish language? Are we going to have that translated for us? Okay, that's a question I think Ms. Moisten raised her hand. I'm sorry, Ms. Pat, I didn't, I- That's okay. I really I'm do love you. I, I love you, I love you, I love you a I lot. I love you too. You know, you're that <laughs> <honestly good. laughs> 
Uh, Ms. Moyston, go ahead. So we can have it translated in Spanish. Um, I was going to ask Deb, Ms. Ferreira about it, it being um, translated into, I don't know what the correct term for Cape Verdean. Creole? Creole. Creole. Cape Verdean Creole, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cape Verdean Creole, and uh, you know, any languages that you guys can think of that it could be translated into would be great. And I can see, if, or, or if you have resources to have them translated, that would be great too. And I'll look into that. So that's where that's where the steam pen, you know, to ask you know native speakers mm -hmm. to help us with something also. Yeah. So I think this gets back to the point you were raising earlier in you know to the larger. Uh, the, the larger question about the resources we need. So for example, that's a category, you know, we may need some translation services going forward to, to broadly connect with the community in, in, in the best way possible, in the deepest way possible. So that, that's, that's kind of like a topic, I mean, like a, a category, for example, translation services, mm -hmm. something we can share with the town. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if we have those needs, that's what we articulate to the, the town so they can put them in place. Ms. Owen, I think you had your hand up next. Oh no, I I want to I was interested in that also because I was mm -hmm. thinking about um, just the how we would go about translating people's responses and flyers too to make sure that everybody is aware of um, the survey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know we have uh, um, the Khmer community, Cam Cambodian Cam community, for example. And I'm at so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, you know, you know, having experience in the schools, you know, we, you know, we used used to when I was working, certainly, and I'm sure they still do it now. Uh, we're translating a lot of different things into languages so that, um, you know, there was an equitable way of communicating with folks across the board as much as possible. So I, I think that's something we certainly should strive for in, in this effort, you know, whether whatever language it is, um, we try to do our, our best to, to, to cover all the bases there or as many of those as we certainly can um, in that effort. It sounds like what, I, what I'm hearing from the group in terms of the, the, um, the, this link is that we, we need to give people some options that'll allow them to freely share information. And, you know, whether that's email, name, whatever, there are some optional categories there. And, um, you know, it, it, it sounds like that's something we, we should consider as a group. Um, and, and how best to do that. Um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, whether we, we, we craft uh, you know, we, we just put parenthetically, you know, in some of these things, optional, optional, optional. But at the same time, I want to be sure that we're getting what we need. You know, Ms. Walker? Um, I understand that our goal would probably be to have everyone fill it out in its entirety. Uh, but I think that we should just make the entire thing optional because there may be some questions that people feel uncomfortable answering, but they may want to share with us other questions. Share other questions? Mm -hmm. Like share their answers to other questions. I see, I got you, yeah. Uh-huh. Mr. Vernon Jones? Um, when I looked at the survey in Newton, they had a single response box. And my proposal here is that we give everybody all the questions and say, respond to any, any of them or all of them, and then give them a single box. And then they can tell their story. They can go one and here's my answer, two and here's my answer, or they can just answer one question. But I think the simpler we make it for people to communicate in their own style and way, the better input we'll get. And I certainly support making name and email address optional. Ms. Moiston? Yep, and I just wonder too, how does the group feel about, so if we have an ambassador and then she, that he or she is with, you know, six or seven community members and they just do like a more of a general answer. 
that works as well, correct? Because, you know, that, that would be very hard for someone, you know, if they have a group of seven or eight to have them individually do the actual form. But if you take all of their the responses and compile them into one it would be good. I could, I could see that working for us, especially in terms of, you know, the time frame that we're working on also. And I think these, these questions too, as, as I'm remembering them, are relatively open-ended so that in, in some ways they could certainly uh, fit into what Mr. Vernon Jones is saying. It gives people an open-ended option to just answer what's on their mind and, and heart. And not that they have to go on a grocery list and answer, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it, it may, not, may not appeal to them in that way either. It may seem like an overload, but maybe some folks have a certain thing they want to share with us is very important. And that answer expressed in their own narrative might cross a number of different elements of what we're, we're looking at. So um, I think we should maybe, you know, move to try to uh, have this, this link um, be more user-friendly in the ways we're talking about, certainly leaving things optional. And um, so, Ms. Ms. Moisson, I'm thinking about uh, uh, having us, you know, look again at that in some way, look at that form to, um, you know, maybe in the, the it, it's, it's in good shape right now, I think the way it looks, but if we need something else to, you know, to be done on it, that we should, we should do it as quickly as possible. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. I think the last set of list of our questions sent to Ms. Moiston did have optional, preferred but optional for name and email address uh, and a single box then said that says enter, answer any or all combined or separately. So I, I think the current draft is really is very much in line with the conversation we've just had. Okay, well, you know. It, it states we invite you to respond to any or all of the questions below. And that, that's about as open-ended as it gets, you know. And again, I, let me just say, and this is related to another the topic we need to talk about, but if, if we can go with that, the, the format that's there with the understanding that it's open-ended enough and it allows for some uh, anonymity for folks who really need that in order to express themselves fully, then, you know, we should, we should probably move that forward uh, as quickly as possible, considering the, the fact that we do need to do some translation work, et cetera, and we need to explore that as a resource. Um, but I would like to, you know, get that, get that moving, especially since we, you know, we want to put out a, a press release, et cetera, uh, in a timely manner to the community. Any, any comments from the, the group on that? So, so it, um, yes, I guess, Ms. no, I guess that's just to kind of like, just to be clear in my mind. And that, so you're saying that obviously with what you, um, with kind of like respond to any and all, we'll also kind of say that obviously they can they don't have to state their name if they don't want to and that they can respond in their native language they can respond in whatever language they feel comfortable i mean i guess we, we need to kind of make sure that that's stated um so that they feel comfortable to do so absolutely just in response to that yes and yes and yes and, and i think in terms of announcing this i think we have to be able to say that whether it's in a press release or on the actual site itself before someone begins diving into that that link. You say, you know, well, once they get in there, they say the first thing they see is exactly what you said, Ms. Ferreira. You know, you know, you can you can respond in, in your your native language. You can respond um, to any or or all questions you you feel you want to respond to. And um, I think that leaves it open ended. So it, it's an open palette for people. And I think that's what we want to want to broaden the the opportunity there. So, what you're asking, I think, is exactly where the way we should go. 
We all good on that? Okay, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, we had also talked about inviting people to uh, come speak to us in person. Uh, and maybe, I don't know whether that's this agenda item or, or another one, but um, I think what, what we talked about was making this, you know, give us your answer here or sign up for a time to come speak at a public hearing. Do we, can we schedule a public hearing? That's a great segue to be on our agenda. That's exactly what that was, you know, okay. the, the whole idea of, you know, what what's the, you know, how wide a net can we put out there to um, give people multiple op opportunities, you know, to, to respond to us. And I think maybe Mr. Bachman, you can answer uh, Mr. Vernon Jones's question about a hearing. I don't, I don't know. You could call it a public hearing. You could just say an open forum. You could open it up and say, you know, we're here. We're going to allocate X amount of time uh, to listen to the public. Uh, typically, you know, you have that every meeting, right, at, at the beginning when people can make public comment. Um, so I think that you certainly have that. You could choose a date in January, and I think that might be something um, you might, if you choose a date tonight in that you want to do it in January, you could start to publicize that along with all the other material you're putting out, um, if that's something that you want to do. Is this something, Mr. Bachman, that, that people have to sign up for? Well, there's different ways, you know, we're looking at different options for Zoom, you know, it, 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 you could do it like you do, like you do now, which people just show up and then if they have a comment, they would be brought into the room. Um, you could do it where, um, there's more like you have to sign up in advance, although that actually you can't do that because you have to have a public meeting. Anybody can come at any time that you're a public body. Um, we'd have to look through if, what other options are available to you, um, but you, you'd want the public to be able to watch it live and record it obviously, and then have the, as many people as they, available to come and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I think it would be good that, you know, with the press release, if we were able to come up with a date uh, when we'd have this open forum, with the press release, we could all, you know, we could already kind of state the date, you know, and say, hey, here's the, the link to, that way you can respond to these questions, um, you know, in your native language, you can respond anonymously, or you can, and or, and or right? <laughs> you mm -hmm. can also come and talk to us at this public hearing or open forum that state that's scheduled on, you know, January, whatever at this time, you know what I'm saying? I think it would be good to kind of give both information all at the same time. Other comments? I, I have a comment, but I don't want to take up too much airtime here. Uh, Ms. Walker. I actually just have a question about <clears throat> if we did do a public forum the format, would it be that they came to one of these meetings or would it be a separate meeting aside from our meeting where we meet as a group to have people come to speak? Mr. Vernon Jones? I think we could do it either way, but I'd, I'd like to see a set a night aside, uh, you know, or a time aside uh, where there's a big block of time, you know, an hour or two where the public can come and and we don't respond, but we we listen and you know, people could sign up ahead of time for a turn, uh, but they could come without having signed up. And if we get through everybody signed up, then other people could speak as well. Other comments, Ms. Ullman? I didn't have my hand yeah. up, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh-huh, Ms. Ms. Walker and then Ms. Ms. Pat. Ms. Walker? No, sorry, that this was my question. Okay, Ms. Pat? Ms. Pat? Okay, so actually, um, I mean, Tashina is on. I was wondering if you could ask her if she has any questions or comments. Since, you know, she, you know, we can't see her. Cooking. <laughs> did you hear what I said, Mr. Chairman? I did. She just turned off her microphone. I was waiting for her to 
Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah, now she turned it back off again. Okay. I'm listening. But She's listening, yeah. Hi, Tashina. Right now, I don't have any comments right now. Okay. And I'm cooking. That's why my light is, my, my, my camera's off. Okay. Hi, Tashina. And welcome, Hi. by the way. Hi. <laughs> Well, I think Ms. Bowman, while you're while you're 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 speaking there, um, we do have a new uh, group member. Uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Darius Cage. So I see, see him on the screen there. So, um, um, just wanted you to know who he was. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I didn't know. Jerry, okay. Comments. Uh, Paul Jennifer had her hand up in response. Yes, to Jennifer said earlier. Sorry, I just, again, was gonna suggest that perhaps you offer like a daytime and an afternoon time or a, a weekday time and a weekend time so that you have the ability or making it more inclusive by having the um, ability for people to come at different opportunities or different times. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea. I saw some head nods there uh, in, a, in response to what you were saying, Ms. Moist, and also it probably, uh, it would be great to have that happen, th those events, if they are two separate events, happen before a scheduled meeting of ours so that we can hear this information, come back and have some conversation about it. So setting some a date, a date or dates for this right now in January uh, would be important and that's probably something we should do you know, at, at this meeting, Ms. Walker. Did we decide which day of the week we were going to put our regular weekly meetings? We have not. Okay. So I'm also thinking about, you know, what Mr. Bachelman said about the, you know, the, the 25th being the, the budget, you know, there are a lot of things in the, in, in the mix here, but I think the, the earlier in January, we can maybe do uh, this kind of an outreach or in terms of a, a public forum or hearing in January, the better. Ms. Moiston. Sorry, so Darius, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm just, but I'm going to, I, I guess. So I'm just curious, do you have any um, input or any thoughts on anything that we've discussed so far? Um, all of the ideas are pretty good. Um, uh, I, uh, the part about like the questions being optional, I feel like that's like very important because I don't think like someone's problem should be like in a criteria or if, like fit something for it to make like like a make something like make it happen. Um, and yeah, maybe like if people aren't comfortable typing their responses, maybe you can like have like a, a place where you can like record yourself or something and someone can listen to it. And that's pretty much it. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. Very good suggestion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, in terms, of, I'm talking again back to the calendar, the piece. I think this, this is there's a there are a couple of things here. If if, and I'm working backwards a little bit, but if we could schedule a couple of times, and I like the suggestion this moisten about having you know probably one day, one evening, let's let's call it that time for people to do that. And we'd have to be, you know, available as well. That's something we could probably schedule tonight in advance of, you know, sending out a, a press release, which could then be, you know, pretty comprehensive with a lot of different things about the link, about the hearings, et cetera. I don't know what people are, you know, would like to comment on that, but I'm, I'm thinking in, in terms of like the calendar, like maybe that, that first, was it the first full week? I've got to look at the calendar again. The first full week in January. Um, if that gives us enough time. Thoughts on when we could um, we could have that uh, that forum. Mr. Vernon Jones. 
Well, I think it's going to take some time to get the word out and get people lined up. But I'm not committed to this, but let me just throw something out to, to get us started. I would propose Saturday afternoon the 9th and Wednesday night the 13th. Alicia has her hand up. Yes, I'm sorry, I was looking at a calendar here and it took up my scene. Alicia, sorry, Ms. Walker. That's okay. Um, so I think Wednesday the 13th would be good. I was gonna suggest that um, second full week in January, just because we wanna have enough time to give people notice um, so that we have a great turnout like we would like, but I think we should move the weekend one out if we can to that weekend, because I think that's a little bit soon with the holiday for the ninth. Okay, agree. Mr. Bachman. So the, yeah, that's I think that's I agree with Ms. Walker that if you did it the weekend of the 16th, that's Martin Luther King Day weekend. So if there's something that's going, people will be more focused on thinking about things. I think it might be a good time to for this committee to be out there, this out there saying, and we're here to listen as well. Okay. So I'm trying to look at our calendar here. So, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones and, and Ms. Walker, you're talking about the 16th as a possible date? Yeah, or an 13th, evening? The 13th and the 16th. Yeah, the 13th. 13th and the, oh, the 13th and the 16th. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does that stand with, with other members of the group? What are the times? Like, is it evening, afternoon? I don't know which one for which day. I, I think we were talking about, um, I'm not sure which was which, but one was an evening, one, one was a, an after, after afternoon or daytime, as I put, I use the term. Alicia, what, what would you recommend? Um, I think it might make more sense to do during the week at this regular meeting time, like the 5.30 time. And then if we do like a daytime event on a weekend or more of an afternoon time. So we're talking about um, this time, maybe 5.30. Um, the other consideration is to, to do it later on that evening to allow people to get through their dinner hour maybe and, um, you know, go to, you know, start maybe at seven. There are different different ways people have, you know, use their evenings. Um, some folks don't like to cut through dinner hours to do things like that. Other people like to do it before or right after. I know we schedule this meeting because most people are available after 5.30, so. Um, Ms. Ms. Owen? Um, will the meetings be recorded, like the people that are coming to tell us? Okay. Yeah. So why don't, why don't, I, why don't I propose this then? How would, would we go with, let's, you know, stick to the, let's stick to 5.30 on Wednesday the 13th, and that would be our evening forum. And then Saturday at one o'clock. Just to throw out a time. Ms. Moyston? Um, Brianna, can you make some fantastic flyers so that we can post that on the website and you guys can send those out in other places, please? Yeah, of course. Um, do you guys have great. any specific um, colors that you wanted to brand our group with or? Um. Whatever the town color is. Okay. I don't know what do other people think. I have a question about Saturdays, though. Um, I, I I think one o'clock might be a hard time. I know I know for me it's generally a hard time because on Saturdays, once I get going with my day, I'm usually unavailable. Um, so I don't know. I don't. I, you know, I'm thinking of like, I don't know, things like food shopping and farmer's market. Like if people are doing stuff during the week, like midday Saturday, I don't know. I don't, 
is there any other time on like can we do it earlier like 10 i just suggested that one o'clock to to open open up a comments like yours to see how this might work for people um, all, all of us have different you know plans and and styles on the weekend but uh uh, certainly that makes sense. It might make sense for a lot of people. Other folks? Mr. Vernon Jones? Well, as Paul Bachman pointed out, that's the Martin Luther King Day weekend. I'd like to know what else is scheduled for that Saturday before we pick a time, maybe. Well, that, that, that Saturday morning probably is going to be probably filled with some events. <laughs> I mean, we don't the know. Breakfast, the breakfast be happening? Uh, not, obviously not breakfast, but probably a virtual, virtual. No, they're not going to have that? Uh, well, I checked in. And so the last, so I knew that they were, were thinking about doing something virtual. The town will do something virtual on the 15th. Okay. Mm. But I'm sure like in Springfield and Holyoke and other surrounding areas that there's a probability of them as the other cities and towns celebrating in some way. Mm -hmm. So Saturday, we, we seem to like Saturday, but so what, what time would, 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 would you suggest? I'd like to get this settled and, and move on. We have a couple of other items we have to discuss too. Can I ask Tashina a question? Yes, Ms. 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 Pat. So, hi, Ms. Tashina. Yeah. Um, will like 3 p.m. work for you on Saturday? Um, I mean, I mean, for me personally, like I'll I'll make it work. Um, I mean, I'll make it work. I just I'm just trying to like, you know, throw something else out there before. You know, but I mean, I guess it's COVID, so not many people are leaving anyways type thing, you know, but I was just trying to think a little bit, like, kind of once I, once I leave my house, I usually leave my house, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, 3 p.m., if that's what the group agrees on, I mean, whatever time the group agrees on, I'll, I'll make, you know, an effort to be participating. I just. I just was like thinking like, oh, maybe it'd be better to try to do it before people are leaving their house for one reason or another. Well, if we establish, yeah, and, and if we do it now, if we get this information out now, it, it, it's a, there's several weeks here we're, we're talking about where people can think about this going forward. So we've, we've got the, we have the 13th, um, we put that out there. And we have this, the, the 16th, let's say at three o'clock, there's plenty of time for people to, to plan around that too. And um, right. you know, they can sit in this as long or as short as they want to. And they also have ways of accessing us beyond the hearing. I just want right. to, let, you know, this is not the only time they'll get to say anything. So I, I'm you know, suggesting to the, the group that we, we, we put those dates and times out now and, um, you know, make those plans. Mr. Vernon Jones. I would suggest we also set an ending time. Sure. Partly I think we'll get better attendance if people feel it's not going to go on forever. Mm -hmm. uh, and partly I think we, we may be limited in how long we can really listen well. <laughs> Well, this is Amherst after all. So you, you, you could get a very active audience. Uh, oh yeah, you will. <laughs> it will come. <laughs> so, I mean, this, just taking this in, in response to that, um, you know, on the one hand, we, that, that makes sense too, because it gives people a frame. We also, if we, we get a large, larger turnout and there's a lot going on, then we don't want to shortchange anyone either. So we probably should leave ourselves the option to extend the time a little bit. But we can we could certainly say we're planning on whatever time we decide as a group. It does it does help people to know. 
I think two hours is good. So let's go with 5.30 to 7.30 on Wednesday the 13th and three o'clock to five o'clock on Saturday the 16th. And, you know, we'll agree to, to get a press release to include that. Brianna's going to make some outrageous flyers and we're going to, you know, in the, in the right colors, whatever those are, I don't know what they're going to be, but surprise us. And um, we'll also be talking about in that press release, the link to our, um, to our website. Does that cover everything in the press release? Yes. Okay. So can we move to a, a, a related topic? Um, and um, and I guess, let me just go to this, let me skip down before, because I want to get to this best practices around collecting racial data, which is an important question for us because um, it, it's, it's come up a number of times, not only here in, in in our discussions, but certainly um, in other towns and other communities. But before I do that, I want to get back to Miss Miss Pat's um, initiating conversation around resources. So if we have, we now know that we're going to have um, a scheduled hearing, a uh, public forum, if you will, on the um, on the thirteenth and the sixteenth. We, um, I'm looking at, I'm looking at you on the screen, Ms. Moiston, you know, are, is, what kind of resources are we going to need to have in place that we can do within the group um, without any additional help? Can we just do that ourselves as in, you know, Ms. Moiston, do it, <laughs> set it up. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help in any way that I can possibly help you guys and support you. Okay. Um, so I was taking a note of something. So can you just repeat it again? Because I, I think I, I got what I, you I said. Saw, what I said was I was talking about going back to what uh, Ms. Pat was talking about in terms of resources. If we're going to have um, public forums on Wednesday and on Saturday, are we gonna need any resources other than the technical pieces to put this together with the invitations, et cetera? So, I, I mean, I don't know if you would want to have a professional facilitator come in to monitor and to keep the conversation going, or if you guys feel like it's okay, well, I just to have people come in and speak. So that piece would be up to you. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, we would, I just, we would, have a Zoom link, which I will get to Brianna so that she can put it on the, the flyer. Mm -hmm. Well, our, our, you know, our mode of operation has been in public comment is to listen to folks. And um, so it would probably be left up to me or Ms. Owen, for example, or any member of our community to facilitate that because, you know, we'd have to, uh, depending on, you know, yeah, we, we don't want anyone, you know, taking up too much time, certainly, you know, and, uh, but we don't want to shortchange them in terms of what they want to share. So um, I'm not sure how best to approach that because I'm thinking of myself and I can't speak for Ms. Owen, but I'd like to be uh, a close listener in, in this regard and not have to feel like I had to, you know, man, manually facilitate that. I agree. Uh, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, I, I was kind of thinking about that too before Ms. Moisten brought that up. I mean, I think that's where we need to kind of have that conversation around like resources and what we need because, you know, again, yeah, for us, if we're gonna be listening, we wanna be focused on, on listening, right? And really kind of taking our own notes, things like that, as opposed to facilitating, as opposed to kind of 
writing down copious notes or whatever the case may be, even though I know it's going to be recorded, but even to kind of have the help of someone to go over those recordings and things like that and kind of match it up with possible data that we're going to have to kind of, you know, review and things like that and getting the written responses also and kind of putting those in some type of category. I mean, we're going to need some type of consultant, I mean, you know, so I don't know if we would have, we'd be able to have consultants in place by the 13th, because that's, you know, fast and coming. But even if we can't do that, I mean, obviously we need to do it. We need to kind of be set up if we're going to announce it. So those are some of the things that we really need to figure out. I mean, I think the resources uh, <laughs> question, we, we need to kind of have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Ms. Moisten, and then Ms. Pat. So oh, Pat had her hand up first, so. Are you sure? Pat, yeah, it's fine. I'm just okay. gonna. I'm glad mm -hmm. we're. I'm glad we're having this discussion now. And actually, on our first meeting, I I assume that we will have an official secretary that will take the notes for us. Um, I know Miss Marston has been doing a fantastic job, but um, attending our meetings is not the only responsibility he, she has. And I'm just concerned that she's taking on a lot. I mean, I can speak for her. And when I alluded to resources and consulting, whatever name we want to call it, it's, I don't want anybody to feel overburdened. I know the, the chair, Mr. Wally, you've done a great job and the, and the vice and Mr. Ross Benningers and everybody, but since the uh, town manager told us that it's resources, I mean, I agree with what Ms. Ferreira said. Um, this would be a good time to, to have somebody just um, put everything together for us at the, at the hearing and also go back to the recordings and see any you know, themes and similarities in our previous meetings. We just need you know, somebody to help us out. Um, and I think, you know, the town employees helping us out, but I think we need more. So I'm glad we're having this con um, conversation. I'm repeating myself that that's some of my thinking in terms of resources so that we yep. don't all feel burnt out. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so what I most likely be able to offer, so typically I will offer whatever you would like, but with it seems automatic that I would be more of in a host position where I introduce you guys and I'm keeping up with who's in the audience and who has questions and if we have a Q&A. So um, that makes it a little bit hard for me to take notes at the same time. However, if I miss something, I always go back to refer to the notes now. So the notes can be handled. And if, even if we have someone who facilitates that they most likely will go back to the notes at some, I mean, to the video recording as well. So I can, and we will all have that recording. I can send it out to us all so we can all pick out what we, you know, what really resonated with us or with you at the meeting or because I don't know that we can get someone in by the 13th. That is yeah. for facilitation. That's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bachelman. Yeah. So I think it's important for you to identify what your needs are. So you could you could, whether you need facilitation, I know um, Ms. Moisten is very good facilitating. She and she's is a, a good way of handling that. We can provide technical support. Out, you know, uh, the other staff can provide technical support, or whatever we need for that piece. Um, and or if you need someone who's going to do deeper research um, for you, or if you need someone who's going to help you move from meeting to meeting so there's someone doing stuff in between so you're it's not all left on you um like a project coordinator project manager those are all different skill sets that you'd want to identify um for who can help get this project moving because this isn't going to end you know this, this is an ongoing effort for us i think um so i think drilling down a little bit more into what it is that you need to help you move forward um it, to um, it will be important. You know, what are the skills that you feel like you're not that we need to bring to the table that we don't have access to as a town that we would have to go put an RFP out type of thing for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, it seems like even if are we talking about having this in a in a, a, a Zoom format? So if we're talking about a Zoom format, then what you're offering, Ms. Moisten, is could be have a lot of utility for us 
in terms of recognizing people, you know, putting them in the queue, having them speak, et cetera. I, I would like to have available to us um, that, and but also I'm not sure if we need a person in addition to that, in addition to you, for example, to, um, you know, sort of, you know, be a facilitator, if you will, to move the conversations forward in addition to what you're doing. Mr. Vernon Jones. I think it depends a little bit on what we're expecting to do. I would like to see us have somebody whose only job is to take notes. Uh, and I also think it might be good to have an additional tech person, you know, backing up and um, protecting the meeting. Um, but if we're simply going to have people, you know, put people in a queue and give them a certain amount of time and unmute them and mute them again, we don't we don't need a lot of facilitation. Um, I I. I feel like we're going to need a lot of help when it comes to really thinking about alternative ways to organize services. Uh, and I want to make sure that, you know, there's a pot of money that we save enough of it to, to really help us with that piece. Um, I think listening to the community, you know, we, one, I think we already have a sense of a lot of what we're going to hear, but, mm -hmm. um, I, I'd be inclined to hire a note taker, make sure we've got extra tech back up, uh, and then let's see after we've had the hearing what we think we need the most help with. Uh, I do think we'll need help, um, but it's, I think it's a little hard to say right now exactly what we most are gonna need. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, and I'd certainly like to hear from, from others on this. Um, one of the questions I, and maybe we can do this with a recording, but, uh, you know, might we need somebody to, to, you know, literally transcribe this stuff into a document that, that we can look at to, to study. Mr. Bachelman? So Zoom does provide that automatically. So it does, it does provide transcription. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Nice. So, yeah, and so I'm going back to the, the resourcing around this. Um, let's, let's say, uh, assuming, you know, Ms. Moyston is able to, you know, manage for us that, th those, um, those forums in terms of the, the, the technical work of moving people in and out of, of the queue. And we have a note taker, as Mr. Vernon Jones is, is putting forward, um, then you know, when it's all said and done, I think we might need uh, some help. I'm not sure exactly how to, how to articulate this help right now, but how to take this information and collate it into something that's going to, you know, move us forward in our work. We're just gonna have a lot of information and how are we gonna break this information down? This goes back to what are the, you know, kinds of questions we might be asking uh, people to comment on at the uh, at these forums. Is it going to be open ended, similar to the uh, you know to the, to the link, for example, or are we going to have some particular questions that are guiding questions for people to say when you come on here, here's what we're looking for, and the, the notes could follow underneath those questions. You know, we're looking. For, what what's your response to this? What's your experience with this? And we can. You know, begin to collate it in that way so that when we're all said and done, we don't have this broad array of commentary all over the place, but we can actually put them in some categories that we can recognize and, and use going forward. So I think a lot of how we stage the, the, the forum is going to be pretty important. Comments, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, so I mean, I guess for me, what I'm hearing is like two different things. I, I mean, obviously, we're hearing, you know, preparation for the, the open forums, right, and what we need for the open forums. But I'm also talking about, so that's one, but then the, another one is talking about just moving us 
um, you know, from meeting to meeting and the work that we need to do in between meetings. So I think though we can't, I, I don't, I, I, we shouldn't like take too much time to really look for someone, you know, we need to kind of figure that out, you know, and, and I know we might not know everything that we need, but I think we could start putting together some type of, you know, RFP of, of things that we need. Like, I know we're gonna need, you know, someone that's going to be, you know, kind of collating, organizing, gathering information that we're gonna get from the open forums, from the written responses, from the police data. We're gonna need someone that's gonna be doing deeper research, you know, from week to week. We need more data. We need to collect more information, you know, locally, regionally, nationally around this work more than what we, we're gonna be able to do given that we have everything else going on. We're gonna need a lot of data organization. We're gonna need someone that has very good writing skills that's gonna help us write these reports. You see what I'm saying? I mean, there's gonna be general things that we're gonna need and someone with facilitation skills, which it, later on, if we do wanna have more open forms, more like, which most likely we're gonna need, we're, we're going to do. So I think we need to kind of already start figuring that out as opposed to, waiting and putting it out for another couple of weeks because then we're going to get ourselves we're going to find ourselves in a bind that's what i think okay. so i agree with what everything that miss ferrara just said i want to go back to what miss marston uh alluded to in terms of um miss marston you had mentioned that there's not enough time to get somebody on board quickly. So I'm curious, like, what does it take? Do we, well, I guess the question can go to the town manager, like, do you need to like advertise formally to have people apply or how does this work? I mean, you know, can we reach out to people to see if anybody's interested or is it something we can put it as part of our um, public announcement or, I mean, I'm sure there are people who are out of work might, that might need to do something for us. Another thing I want to mention in, in terms of um, resources is um, I keep going back to grassroots organizing. Like that's another area that I think we will need um, assistance uh, through the ambassador program, you know, for us to also not lose sight of that. So Mr. Bachum and then Ms. Moyston. So if you, I think that what Ms. Ferrara was starting to do is to document what are the right. things that we need. You were talking about data collection, data organization, um, uh, research into regional and national things. These are things that you will do individually, but you want someone who's going to like, you can filter it through them. Someone who's going to be able to pull that together, deliver reports to you. And then when, as you make decisions, be able to reduce that into writing. So someone's got to take on all those tasks. And I, that's what I'm hearing you say, Ms. Ferrer, what you're looking for um, and possibly facilitation down the road, but not necessarily right up front. But you're, you're saying what's, what's our end product? And our end product is a document probably. Who's gonna, how are we gonna get there? We do data collection, do all these things. Uh, and uh, Ms. Pat, what you're saying is maybe we need more outreach into the, like more of our organizational model. And maybe that's something at the same time or in addition to, or um, instead of. So I guess the first thing you would wanna do as a committee is to say, what is it that we want? If we could do a quick sort of just a, maybe, maybe we do it in betw between now and the next meeting, come up with a list of all the things that you need and come up with a sort of sample thing, then send it out to people to get some quotes on and put it out there. Um, you know, we are a public, we are an entity, you know, we, we have to follow procurement laws, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think you're right, er, time is of the essence. And so maybe we can, if someone wants to, or you can submit ideas or, um, or if Ms. Ferrara wants to suggest some things and we can pull an, a, a sample RFP together to bring back to the committee at your next meeting, we could probably move that forward pretty quickly. Ms. Ferreira, would you be willing to, to sort of spearhead that in terms of um, us coming up with uh, uh, this, this, this list or the, the elements of the, of the uh, resources we might need going forward? Uh, we could, um, following the protocol, how would we get that to Ms. Moyston um, for us to review? Because that would be the next thing to get it to, to Mr. Bachman. Sure, yeah. People want to send 
um, you know, their list to me. At least I can put it in some type of um, fashion in terms of, you know, not being redundant and all of that. And then submit it to who? Back to you, Paul? Or, mm -hmm. or to, okay, to Mr. Bachman? Both, everything should go both? to both Jen and me, yeah. Yeah. Okay. To, yeah. To, and, I, and I think we, we should all weigh in on that, um, certainly. Um, and this all is- right. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll yeah. people send it to me and then I'll kind of put it together and then send it back to you all and then you can share it with everyone. Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, I think we, yes, if, if Deborah would get things to Jennifer and, and Mr. Bachman, it'd be great if we could see it, you know, a couple of days before the meeting so we have a chance to, to read it and maybe prepare some possible edits that we could do after our next meeting. That's so are we, yes, Ms. 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 Pat. Just to be clear, are we talking about next week meeting? You want this done before next week meeting? Yeah, that might be that might be too quick. <laughs> I just want to clarify. I want to be sure. Well, I wasn't making the comments, so I don't know, Mr. Vernon Jones. Is that what you were speaking to? I, 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 I didn't have a particular timeline in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would that time work for you, Ms. Ferrara? By next meeting. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's whether folks are able to do it because remember, it's Chris, you know, Christmas is coming up and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all of those things and New Year's. So, <laughs> well, yeah, Mr. Bachman. Yeah, so I don't, I won't be available next week just for the, because we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're just won't be around. So, yeah. So we should. So, why don't we say by, by the sixth then, by the, the, the which would give us the two weeks but i guess like get it to me <laughs> you know you need to get me some information i don't know what the fourth or something by the fourth in the morning so i can turn it around that would work for for me i don't know about other no, that's people. that's fine yeah okay and I think we, yeah, you know, we make it a point to get that. And I think in, I was trying to get back to Miss Miss Pat, what you, you're talking about. This, these are resources, not only I think just for the what, what's coming up in terms of a hearing, but th this is, you know, we're starting to take a longer term view, at least starting the longer term view around resourcing uh, and supporting the work of the the group. Mm -hmm. So um, we have some immediate things, certainly. Uh, in terms of facilitation and, and that kind of thing. But then we have some longer term things regarding re report writing and support and research and those kinds of things, which take time and have to go through some, some procedures to, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So if we can get that information to, to, um, uh, to Ms. Ferreira as soon as possible, I would say, uh, certainly if we would not leave it to the last minute um, to give her plenty of time. And uh, I would in you know, encourage us all to support her in that way so she can get that to, to uh, Ms. Moyston and Mr. Bachman. Yeah, and just a second, what um, Mr. Wiley said, yeah, just make sure you put everything in terms of resources that you think that we would need in general, not just for the open forum. I think it's for us to be able to do our work successfully and really meet those two kind of reports that we need to um, submit um, to the town council. Agreed. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, so, um, so you can do a little summary at the end. I'm going to come. I'm going to come back to the, the the hearing. I also want to talk about you know setting up our next meeting at some point. But I do want to take a moment, if I can, shift to the uh, this whole notion of uh, uh, collecting racial data. And I think this is this is an important topic um, in the research some of us have done certainly, and uh, you know we've all done some reading. There are there are some states and and some local municipal uh, some municipalities across the, the the country, who D.C. for example I think has required that their police department collect racial data 
on on stops, et cetera. That was a, that was a court ordered, um, uh, a court issued order, and so we're talking about that. It comes up in the questions as we're talking about you know talking with the um, Amherst Police Department about collecting data around race, and um, there are some you know ethical questions. There are some uh, other questions certainly that we can ask about that, but it sounds like it's something that we we want to know um, as a working group. What kind of uh, racial data is being collected, and what kind we do we hope to see if we're in fact going to um, ask the the police department to collect data that they may not already be collecting? So um, there are questions about how to do this. There are probably some best practices along along the way that we can look at. But I want to just get get the committee's sense uh, within a couple of minutes at least. We can keep we can move this on to a different to another agenda too because we're getting close to time to stop. But I didn't want to uh, lose the moment to hear if anybody had any comments or questions about the police collecting racial data, Mr. Vernon Jones. I wanted to ask the town manager, Paul, do you know what they're collecting now in the way of racial data? Uh, and if they're not, why not? I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I was very impressed with the recommendations of, of the League of Women Voters report. Uh, and then I went to some of these national reports and they all advocate collecting racial data as best practice for collecting and sharing publicly um, data as best practice for police police reform. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Bowman and then um, Mr. Bachelman. Um So personally, I'm still really skeptical about it. Um, being a mom of children who are mixed, who get confused for being Latino all the time. Hey, I'm on my meeting, please stop. I don't know why I've had that soda. Um, it's, it's not, I really just don't think that it's something that, I don't think we're gonna get accurate data, uh, um, whether it be direct, like, I don't think if we're, if we're requesting the police to do it, I don't think we're gonna get accurate data. Um, but aren't, on a side note, aren't arrest records and things like that, aren't those public records? Yes. So, I don't know, I just, I just don't, I'm just not sure we're gonna get very accurate data about what the information that we're getting from the police. Um, and I was going to say, well, maybe we can contact people who got arrested, but I don't think that's going to work either. So that's why I didn't say that. But um, I, I'm just really skepti skeptical about like how accurate the data is without, without requiring them to ask their, whoever they're arresting and then, you know, and then require to note that the person refused, you know, if the person refuses to answer, that that needs to be noted as well. Because I think that's the best way we're gonna get a baseline as to whether or not people, like whether or not people are willing to share that information about themselves. Um, and then like we were saying last week about whether or not, how are we gonna make sure we cover the large genre, you know, genre of people like we have, you know, are we going to allow them to like mark off multiple things, multiple ethnicities? Or are we going to allow, are we going to just put other and just like it could have that be acceptable? Or are we going to allow them to write in what, what the, you know, what the answer is? You know what I'm saying? So like they're yeah. a lot more complex than. It is. It is very. Com it is very complex, and 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 I think the reason for bringing it up is because of the complexity of it. Uh, and I think if we're seeing it as possibly something we need, it's certainly something we have to, to to talk about as a group. Oh, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones asked the question: Is it, are 
are they collecting this data now? We don't know, apparently. And Mr. Bachman, I think you had your hand up after Ms. Bowman. Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of, I think that's a perfect question for the police chief to answer what collect, how do you collect the, what, what information are you collecting? How do you collect it? Do you do you project it yourselves or do you ask the question if there's no answer? Um, you know, and there are certain things that were that, uh, under our sanctuary bylaw, they're not supposed to ask about certain things like immigrant status and things like that. So, so it, there are, there is a, I think, you would want to know how they conduct it in practice. And I think it's a really important questions for you to ask. Well, I think, you know, that that's that's our next step, I, I think, is to contact the Amherst Police Department, certainly, and find out. And then I think in the body of questions that we, we've we asked already, um, uh, we're putting forward to the police department, you know, we, we see the necessity for understanding and you know, the data around race. So how best to do that? There's a huge um, uh, document that came out from uh, United States Department of Justice. Uh, I think the acronym is COPS. Um, and it was um, uh, Community Oriented Policing Services. And they had a, a huge document that they put out, which talked about that specifically collecting data how it's collected some of the pitfalls etc documents like that is probably something you know we should look at to to keep ourselves better informed but certainly um we we should go back and, and talk to our, our our local police chief and i think was it somebody had their hand up miss i did miss pat yeah so as this topic we're discussing right now for me uh, is triggering, triggering me because in 2004, we were having similar conversation. So to hear today uh, for the town manager to state that he doesn't know if we're collecting and none of us in, the, in, in this Zoom meeting, we don't know if the APD is collecting or not. I mean, it's just um, fulfills my suspicion and worst nightmare. Why wouldn't they be collecting identifying information? Ms. Tashina, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Sometimes mixed race individuals can be mislabeled. I have mixed race grandchildren. Sometimes they refer them as Latino as well. I get that. I get that, but it shouldn't be the only excuse for APD not to be collecting racial data. It matters to me a lot. I would like to know, you know, what you know, what APD is doing in terms of um, who they are stopping, who they are uh, um, arresting, in terms of race. It does matter to me. I and I and I I think. You know, that, that makes perfect sense. I mean, it, it seems to matter to a lot of us, <laughs> certainly. Um, and I, I think the question being posed to the uh, police department is a very direct question and it, it, it has an answer. I think we also have, uh, again, this body of questions that we're putting forward to the police department, which um, we will find out more about what they're doing or in places where they're, they're not doing what we're asking how those gaps might be filled, and um, you know where where the where where the pitfalls that you know in, in terms of data collection and and the use of that data, um, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, I think you you just kind of hit the nail on the head, uh, Mr. Wiley. That's what I was going to say. It's just like we've just submitted a. a you know, a bunch of questions to them, which is going to, by them, by their response, we're going to really get a sense of, okay, have they been collecting this data? Because remember, most of our, our questions, we're asking for breakdowns in terms of identity, you know, race, ethnicity, and, and other uh, background um, information. So they're going to have to let us know, okay, if they don't have it, why don't they have it, and how they've been doing 
that, right? Um, the other thing too that I was hearing, especially from Ms. Ms. Bow Ms. Bowen, Bowman is whether, you know, and I think we'll, we're, we're gonna know that too from their response is, you know, you know, if they're not collecting it, why? Or how are they doing it? What's the breakdown in terms of the categories that they've been um, trying to collect? And also, I guess, can we even trust that they're collecting the information correctly, right? They're doing it in a way that is voluntary, that, that the person feels like they can respond and the person feels that they can trust that. Or, or do we need to really look at in terms of us, right? In terms of recommendations for the future that have been independent you know, an agency or person that collects that information. Um, you know, so those are some of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about as we're talking about, uh, through this and having this conversation. And I think it's gonna be informed a lot by those questions that we already posed to them. Thank you, yes, Ms. Burr. Uh, Ms. Owen. I completely agree. I just wanted to throw out there, I think community trust starts with community transparency. So we need that data. And it is triggering to hear that these same questions were raised in 04. Um, Mr. Wiley, I know you had brought up this reform in DC. I read pretty recently that part of what's going on in DC and them getting this data is also when things seem off, um, Georgetown University law students going back and watching body cams to make sure that the information isn't skewed and there's complete transparency there. So I think all of this is really important. It is, and, and I think it's, it's a deeper dive than what we're gonna to get to it in, in this meeting, certainly. And, you know, and I think that's the reason why we're here as a working group. You know, we, we don't wanna repeat any, you know, mistakes or, you know, leave gaps unfilled, uh, you know, going forward. We're trying to fill in all these areas that where we don't have information and get the information we need and it's gonna be useful. And also we wanna have, you know, be transparent and we wanna be accurate with what we're reporting and we wanna be clear. And I think someone mentioned trust a minute ago, all of this is about building trust in this community. And um, so this is, this is not something that's gonna happen in a meeting or two, certainly, but it has to be a, a persistent and um, an intense piece of work going forward that that you know just, you know exemplifies and and demonstrates the, the the seriousness and the importance of this whole thing for a lot of people, um, and that's that's our job. Um, so that that's what we're charged with. This is the examination of the work. This is the learning that's in that's in our charge. So this is what we do. So um, you know that said. Um, you know, and we can think about this for a, a future agenda too. Uh, we, we need to look deeply at these different dis, these different uh, towns and, and cities and what they're doing. We have to look at the research because we know, we hear statistics all the time about statistics, black versus white arrests, you know, use of force, non-use of force. That data is coming from somewhere and somebody's collecting it. So, uh, you know, how they collect it, you know, if it's accurate, those are the kinds of things we want to, you know, take a deep dive into to figure out what's best, what work best for here, us here in, in the community. And um, so that we can be fully transparent with everybody, you know, police department on down. So um, anyway, so let, we're getting, we're, we're already there at, at 7.30. I want to spend a minute, if, if I can, and you can help me with this, certainly as a group, to uh, summarize a little bit where we are. One thing in terms of calendar, we have the 13th and the, um, and the 16th as our dates for forums. And uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to put out a, a press release, which talks about the forums. We're going to talk about the link that's going to be on the website. And there was a third thing, the, the link, the forums, um, I guess the other the side. Mass, the media. The press release. Press release, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think we're gonna, we gotta get that going and that's gotta be done by soon, right? By next Tuesday? Was it Mr. Bachelman? Yeah. Okay. So we, we have that in place. We are 
Um, so the hearing is the calendar. We're sending Deborah our I'm Debbie about the resources that we need. Yes, thank you. The the resources we have to get that to Deborah by January 4th or earlier, please. I believe that's the date you gave us, um, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, by uh, January 4th in the morning um, or earlier. In the morning. Mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah, so, by 10. Let me just say by 10 a.m. January 4th or, or or before that. Or by January 3rd at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's that's our next piece of work. And that's going to inform our short-term and long-term needs for resources, which we were brought up uh, today. Um, and let's see. I, I'd like to have a way of, of having us talk more about the collection of data after we find out from the police department what they are doing around that just that particular question. Maybe we've got a whole body of questions, but maybe we can bring that into conversation at our next meeting, uh, which leads me to uh, this question about our next meeting. Do we wanna have a meeting next, next Wednesday on the 30th? We've been having them every week on Wednesday, Ms. Pat. I think we should give the employees a break next week. And Mr. Bachelman doesn't need a break. Um, Ms. Moist. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm on vacation next week, so I would really appreciate a break. Yeah. But I'm more than willing to come in and, and, and do a meeting for you guys. It's not a problem. It's virtual, right? Like you can't really get out of a meeting anymore. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think we should respect their time off, please. It's not healthy. <laughs> would we? So, are we, the following Wednesday on the sixth? Yes. Yeah, okay. that would be that's, that's a, a good recommendation. It'll also give us a chance to do some more, you know, continue our research on our own. It gives uh, some room for us to interact with, um, uh, you know, the, the Amherst Police Department. Uh, because they too, everybody's running in this uh, holiday circle. Um, so our next meeting would be on January um, 6th. Well, can you do Wednesdays, uh, Mr. Wiley? I'm doing them. It, it's hard, but I'm doing them because that seems to work for everybody else. I, mean, I can do Thursday. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah, so you don't, okay. Mr. Bachman. So you settled on the six, is that, have you concluded that? I'm, I'm just asking either by head nod or wave to me or something, the sixth, if that works for everybody. Okay, so the sixth at 5.30. Yes, Mr. Bachman. So I have two things I'd like to mention uh, under other things, whatever. Yeah. Um, so one is that uh, Councillor Balmilne was part of the meeting and she has uh, emailed uh, Ms. Moyston and I, and so we'd like to share those with you. She had ideas for some things that she'd like to share with you. I just ask if we share those out that you not respond all because that's considered deliberation. Yeah. You, you can respond back to Ms. Moyston or me or something, but you can't email each other. The second thing is just uh, thank Ms. Moyston for be having a, a quick trigger finger on eliminate. We had two people here who we perceived to be Zoom bombers uh, with IP addresses in Texas. So, um, you know, this, these types of means sometimes become targets. So uh, we will continue to monitor that and uh, be alert to people who are asking to be recognized from, from outside the room. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. I don't want to discuss this now, but it would be helpful to me if someone could say something about the long document that was in the packet uh, and whether that relates to a particular agenda item? Oh, yes. Brianna? Yes. Oh. So, um, Mr. Wiley, me and Jennifer met with um, a master's of public policy student over at UMass, and she's interested on doing her capstone studies on um, something similar to what we're doing, basically on how community involvement increases um, 
public value, I think is how she phrased it. Yeah. And Paul and I were interested more in learning about how to measure um, public value and what that means um, in the academic context that she brought it up in. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ms. Moyston. Yeah, I just want to let everyone know there's Kwanzaa celebrations that are happening this week. So um, on the 26th at one o'clock, there's a Kwanzaa celebration. Um, the link will be sent out to you and like as a group, I'll send it out to you. And then there's some other resources for other events that are going on as the Shabazz will be having something um, at the Mill District at 4 p.m. I believe on the, the 26th of December as well. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know about that. Um, also, just to, if I may, just as a reminder before we uh, move to adjournment, uh, as we're creating the agenda, I just want to remind folks to, if you have agenda items you want us to deliberate on uh, at our next meeting, um, please send them uh, uh, to me, Ms. Moyston, so that we can, you know, get them in the agenda. I don't want to be uh, the one creating the agenda in isolation. Although I do, you know, I, I create it based on what I think what I'm hearing from people and what I see in the minutes. But if you have something that you'd like to uh, have a discussion about at the meeting, please send that to, to me so that we make sure everyone is, is having the input that that's needed for this work. Um, also, again, I want to welcome, uh, welcome you, Darius, uh, to our meeting. I want to thank you, Ms. Moistine, for inviting Mr. Cage into the conversation earlier. He, I know he was listening very carefully because I was, I was looking at him so much. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we want to welcome you. And also, I'm going to reach out to you to see if you, you know, have any questions for us and how any of us might be able to support you going forward. It's going to have been a quick turnaround, and we're just happy you're here. So, um, uh, welcome again, and thank you for your participation. Uh, comments, um, Ms. Ferreira, then Ms. Pat. So just quickly, like in terms of agenda items, by when do you want us to submit those so that we can make sure like on a weekly basis so that then it becomes a habit? By when do you want those by? Well, I, I have to get them. Well, Ms. Moyson has to post it 48 hours ahead of time. So if they're like, am I accurate in this, I guess, Ms. Moyson? Like the, if, it, the Wednesday, if it's a Wednesday meeting, then I it, mm -hmm. then it'll say Monday, Monday morning. Oh, Monday morning is a good time. By yep. ten too, just say Monday by ten. By noon. By noon. Okay. That works. It, it has to go to the clerk, so I have to submit it, and then the clerk has to to actually um post it to the website. So there's a little bit of a process there, um, and also weekends and holidays are not included. So for instance, when we have Monday holidays. Um, our meetings will need to be posted the previous Friday if we're still having a Wednesday meeting. So it, and it's literally down to the hour. So if we changed our meeting to 10 o'clock a.m., that means it would have to be posted no later than 10 a.m. on Monday morning. It just happens that our meetings fall in the evening. So I don't really usually have to worry about it. I, I will I'll communicate with Ms. Moyston to, to re remind folks to, if necessary, to say, hey, this, you know, just a reminder, if you haven't thought about an agenda item, please submit it by X time, X date, whatever we're working on, just to make sure that we're all uh, getting our chips in the bowl, so to speak. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I raised my hand. Yeah. Yes. I just want to say, um, Thank you to Mr. Wally for wanting to reach out to Darius. Um, I think that that's a good thing. I've already also reached out to him that if he ever have questions um, about the group, he can not like discussing anything, but if he needs any type of support around you know, the work we're doing, so just um, let me know. So thank you for, for wanting to do that. Oh, you're welcome. And I, I think I may be, if I may, I'm, I think I'm speaking to everybody in this case. I think we'll all reach out to, 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 to Darius at, um, as a part of the welcome. And uh, also don't wait for us, Darius. You know, if you have something on your mind, let it fly. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you very quickly. And again, we're glad you're here. 
Um, Don't worry, it will <laughs> when he get adjusted. Yeah, I'm not worried about him. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, so thank you. Um, let's see, where are we? I think we're at the end. I'd like to uh, have a, a motion to adjourn. So move. Mr. Vernon Jones has moved that we adjourn the meeting. A second. I second that. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I can see you. Or do I really have to take a roll call, Ms. Moist? Okay. okay. I'm, I'm writing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody's on board. Thank you all very much. And um, have a great rest of the week. Stay safe, stay healthy. Enjoy the holidays. Merry Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Thank you. <laughs>